All right, moving right along with these videos. In this section, we're going to learn how to factor quadratics in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So uh, the only new vocabulary word is just what is a quadratic equation. So standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. Kind of like standard form of a line is ax plus uh, by equals c. Kind of similar to that, but here we have x squared, x, and um, c. And so what we have here is a quadratic because it's the highest power is 2. And on this side, it's a 0, so it's an equation with both sides. And as you can see, the a value, the number in front of the x squared, the leading coefficient in this section is going to be just a 1. So you are only going to be focusing on factoring quadratics with a leading coefficient that is a 1. So how do we do it? Well, if a equals 1, which is what we're talking about here, it's called a simple quadratic. And we can factor by finding two numbers that multiply to c and add to b. Let me go back a slide. Here's the b value and here's the c value. So we want to find two numbers that add to this and multiply to this. Okay, let's look at why that's the case. Because when we have um, a factored equation, that's x plus, I'm going to call this r1, and then I'm going to do x plus r2. If I was to multiply these together using distribution, the first times the first is x squared, of course, then the first times the last, the outers, and then the inners, those are both, that's r2 times x and r1 times x. And then I'm going to add those two terms together. So I'm going to get r1 plus r2 multiplied by x. And then at the very end, I'm going to get r1 times r2. So r1 times r2. So the number at the back, which is my c value, is the product of these two numbers. And the number in the middle, my b value is the sum of these two numbers. So if you know the b and the c, you have a little puzzle. You have to figure out what numbers multiply to this, yet add to this. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is by listing the factors of c. So whatever number you have right here, factor it out, because whatever your answer is is going to be um, two of the factors of that number. And then look at all the possible pairs of factors and see which one adds up correctly to your b value in the middle. So only note before we start the examples is you have to include the negative signs if they are present. So if c is a negative number, then one of the two factors should be positive and the other should be negative. And then when you add them together, if one is positive and one is negative, obviously you're finding the difference. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Once you have finished factoring the quadratic equation, you can always use the ZPP. So after you factor it, you're going to have two pieces like that equals zero then here you can solve using ZPP, zero product property. If the product of two things equals zero, each of those two individually could equal zero. And then the only last thing is you might need to convert to standard form first. So if they give you an equation that's not already in standard form, you might need to move all the terms over to the left-hand side and then factor. So let's get some examples done. Factor each polynomial. We don't have to solve yet, we're just factoring. So what I want to find, the first thing I'll do is I'll write down my two sets of parentheses. I want to find a couple of numbers that multiply to 12. So I could go 12 times 1, I could go um, 6 times 2, and I could go 4 times 3. Those are the possible combinations. And they just look and see which of those adds up to 8. Well, clearly 6 and 2. So my two solutions, or my two roots, I should say, my two factors are x plus 2 and x plus 6. So 2 times 6. And then if I were to FOIL this out, I could confirm that it really does give me that. And I've made a mistake here. I use the variable x, whereas they use the variable t. So let me change it. t plus 2 multiplied by t plus 6. Okay, so that's my answer. Factored form. I'm just taking it and figuring out what it was before I multiplied it together. Let's try this one here. Okay. First, are there any common factors? H doesn't show up everywhere, and there's no numbers that can be factored out of a 1, a 9, and an 18. So I set up my parentheses, because I know I'm going to do a quadratic factoring, because this is a quadratic, because it's h squared. The products uh, that multiply to 18 is going to be 18 times 1, 9 times 2, and 6 times 3. So I look at those, and I see, OK, 6 times 3 adds up to 9. So my solution is h plus 6 and h plus 3. Okay, let's try this one here. It's got a negative sign. Again, look for common factors first. That's always what you want to do is check for common factors first. If you don't see any, then see it's a quadratic, and so I can factor it 
as a quadratic. Uh, n is in the front, n squared, so I know this is going to be an n and an n. So what two numbers will I fill in? Well, the, the things that multiply to 18 are going to be 18 times 1, um, 6 times 3, and 9 times 2. But I have to notice that because it's a negative 18, one of these two numbers has to be negative, okay? So when I, when I say f add them together to get the middle term, one of the two numbers is going to actually be negative. So if they're a positive one and a negative one, when I add them together, I'm actually getting a difference. So which one of these sets of numbers has a difference of 3? Well, certainly this one has a difference of 3. So if I want to add them up and get 3, I need to use a positive 6 and a negative 3. So n plus 6 and n minus 3. Those two add together to give me 3, and they multiply together to give me negative 18. Okay, now it says to solve and check. Okay, so we can um, use the zero product property here, but in order to use the zero product property, I have to write this side of the equation, we'll do number 17, I need to write this one in factored form. Okay, so x squared in the front tells me this is an x and this is an x. In the back, I need two numbers that multiply to 8. So I could go 8 times 1, or I could go 4 times 2. Which one of those adds up to negative 6? Well, 8 and 1 is 9, 4 and 2 is 6. Um, so to make a negative 6, I need a negative 4 and a negative 2. And that's okay, because when you multiply two negative numbers, you still get positive 8. So x minus 4 and x minus 2. Okay, I'm not done yet, though. I need to take this and use the zero product property. So this one here, if x minus 4 has to equal 0, then I know that x is going to equal a positive 4. And then this one, if I x minus 2 is going to equal 0, then x has to be positive 2. So my actual solutions here are x equals 4 and x equals 2. One more thing to say, you can plug these numbers back in to the original equation, and they will work. So let's try it with 4. If I plug this in, 4 squared is 16. As a check here, 16. Plug in a 4 right here. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. And then plus 8. If you add them up, 16 minus 24 is negative 8. Plus 8 is 0. So it works. Same thing if you plug in a 2 right here. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 6 times 2 is 12. So 4 minus 12 is negative 8. Plus 8 is 0. So whenever you get these answers, it's not some mystical, crazy math that we're doing. It, it really does work, and these are really the zeros or solutions to this equation. If you plug them in, they exactly perfectly work and solve this equation and make it true. All right, let's do one more. Uh, d squared plus 7d plus 10 equals 0. So I can do my two sets of parentheses because there's no common factors. I can put a d in the front and a d in the front because I have a d squared. d times d is d squared. And then I need two numbers that multiply to 10 and add up to 7. So you don't have to write down the list of all the factors if you can immediately see what the answer is. So I'm going to just write down the answer. Plus 5 plus 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 plus 2 is 7. And then my solutions are d equals negative 5. Because if I plug in a negative 5 right here, this will give me 0. And d equals negative 2. Okay, so if I were to plug either of those back into this original equation, they would give me 0 on the left-hand side to make it true. Okay, so anytime you're factoring, just make sure you remember number 1, find the two uh, pieces, and then if you're trying to solve it, remember to set them equal to 0 and solve by working backwards. Alrighty, see you in class.